All right, step one to your sofa dreams. First of all, find cushions that you like. We found these at Target. They come in a multitude of colors and they are 24 inches by 22 inches wide. Here is this. Here's what the project looks like done, as you can tell, without the cushions. It's pretty simple and ripe for painting or staining however you like. You can also get creative with it, which I plan to do eventually, but just not in this video. Here are our plans for the sectional that is completed. And again, I highly recommend going to uh, Anna White slash Ryobi and downloading the uh, images of the sofa done. We did modify the dimensions that are listed on her site because our sofa cushions were a little bit different in size. But as you can see, it's very helpful to have all of these pictures and diagrams to show you what to do. But again, watch the video because you'll see how easy it really is. For aesthetic purposes, we decided to buy a pocket hole jig. It works great and I will show you how that works later but essentially it removes all of the visible screws from the front surface of your couch so other than the two by fours essentially what you're gonna need is a drill gun we got fancy and bought a jig kit for the pocket holes and you're gonna need a saw so hopefully you have these if not maybe a friend does. we're waiting starting on the next two couches so in the meantime I'm gonna start staining mine and I will uh, show that process because hopefully it works it's one of those things I saw on Pinterest so we'll see. okay based on what I saw all you need is some regular paint this is just a pretty pink paint and you mix with water two to one because I want this super light I'm gonna go even more with more water I totally think this is gonna work. Right now it's a really faint pink, which is exactly what I wanted, and you kinda of can't tell because it's in the shadows, but I'll continue this and post pictures when it's What are you doing, Chad? I am measuring and cutting nine of these two by fours to be 66 inches. And what's that? That'll make up the top slats of the, uh, of the couch. Okay, and what's that blue thing? It's a speed square. And what does it do? Well, you can draw a pretty quick line so you can see where I'm gonna cut. Perfect. And I'll put another X and then I'll cut on that side. Great. Thanks, One point man. of note should probably be that most projects suggest that you stain all of your wood before you assemble. So we are skipping that step. It may not be the smartest way, but it's still working out okay. So user's choice. So you can see how the pink is working out. It's looking good. Point note too that we uh, sanded all the pieces of wood last night. So it always is a good idea to sand your wood. We are also using cedar, which is pretty nice, so we can look This is a pocket hole jig, and it's an awesome piece of equipment. Yeah, that's so you can hide the screws. Hide the screws. Here it is all done and stained pink. It's a really nice light pink, which is exactly what I wanted, but you can still see all of the detail of the wood. I really wanted it to look like it was wood that came from Lisa Frank's Unicorn Forest. Yeah. This is what the first step is in assembling your couch. You wanna lay out the base and make sure all of your pocket holes are facing towards the side that you want to be facing out. It would suck to put it all together and have uh, the pocket holes. Chad is using a giant clamp that we got at Harbor Freight. This is good for if you're doing this project solo or if you have people like me who are helping you work on it who are of no help at all. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding. I hope I'm of help. Anyway, one thing that you can do is uh, begin sanding the edges of your 2 by 4s uh, because you want to make sure that they don't give you splinters when you're working with them. This is a left side 
armrest. And as you can see, Chad added a secondary um, support board here for aesthetic purposes. But what you notice is that the inside part is, um, you would think it would be on the outside, but it actually goes on the inside because it uh, So this uh, L and flat side shape goes on the inside because the uh, base of the couch will uh, attach to this. It's added support. So if there you're you a fancy person, you fill in the pocket holes with these wood corks if you're fancy Chad's fancy <laughs> so we skipped ahead a little bit but essentially what happens is from that point of building the armrest you attach it to the base and um, what we did is uh, set the arm right the armrest on the ground like this and then you can hold the base up and against from it. there uh, you um, can flip it and then do the other side. Chad is making a modification to his so he doesn't have an armrest on this side. Um, but once you have both armrests on, then you attach the back piece. Very simple. Lastly, you can see we place the uh, wood pieces here as the bed that the cushion stood on. And you can use pieces of this as spacers so they're equally spread out. And you can nail gun these down or screw them down however you reminder wish. Reminder to double check the website for the design specs and the pictures to go along with the build as you're doing it. It really helps to have that visual guide. A lot of the things that I've shown today have modifications slightly to it so it might pose a little confusion. As Chad is wrapping up this build, I am going to put a coat of polyurethane on mine. I realize this might be backwards, but essentially it's an oil-based uh, semi-gloss. Um, this is an interior as my couch is an interior. Here's what Chad's looks like done. Again, the modification of his being that he added these under panels and it is sans one armrest because eventually it will fit into something else. Well, here's the finished product. I hope that you have fun making your own. Uh, remember to check out the video on Anna White's YouTube page for the full specs. Thanks.